record okay Uh, uh, hi, uh, everyone. So uh, my name is Vikas. Uh, I'm from Ana Networks. Uh, so in this session, we'll uh, discuss about uh, the end-to-end -end FU R1 uh, workload orchestration. Uh, so basically, uh, we will uh, start by having a brief introduction about uh, the NEPU and what are uh, some of uh, some of the uh, some of the components of NEPU and what are some of the design principles of NEPU. Uh, so uh, NEPU basically it's it's a Kubernetes based intent driven automation framework uh, of uh, network functions and the underlying infrastructure. Uh, it, it has basically three swim lanes, uh, the infrastructure swim lane, the workload swim lane and the workload configuration swim lane. So infrastructure swim lane, uh, as the name suggests, it deals with creating the infrastructure and the workload swim lane deals with uh, deploying the uh, network functions on top of those, uh, on that uh, infrastructure. And then uh, we can configure those network functions using the workload configuration. Um, so uh, these are the uh, basic or overall components of NEPHEW R1 release. So we have a package variant controller, a package revision controller. These are basically the components of Porch. Uh, and then we have a config sync. So config sync is basically used for uh, uh, synchronizing uh, a deployment repo with the edge clusters or the deployment uh, uh, target clusters. And then we have a bunch of uh, NEPHEW controllers, uh, cluster API, uh, Cluster bootstrap controllers, for example, uh, they are used in the infrastructure swim lane. And uh, generic specialization controllers, IPEM specialization controllers, these are some of the controllers for operations like allocating IP addresses, et cetera. And similarly, we have a bunch of other controllers like repository controllers, which de deals with creating uh, the Git repository, et cetera. NAD controllers, and then package of approval controllers. So we will see all these things in action uh, uh, in, in, in demo and upcoming slides. So uh, these, these are uh, some of the uh, basic concepts of NEPHEW, uh, the R1 release, uh, config injection, uh, then package specialization and condition choreography. So uh, we will uh, look, uh, into details of each of the concepts in the uh, slides ahead. So, uh, so we'll start with the config in injection. Um, so config injection, basically uh, it's, it's the process uh, of injecting the contextual information to the downstream package revision resources. Uh, this information is, is consumed by the KRM functions in the pipeline for configuring the packages. Now, the source of these uh, configurations are the in-cluster objects uh, itself. Uh, for example, uh, in this slide, uh, uh, in, in this particular slide, the in-cluster object is the workload object, which contains the contextual information about the target clusters. Now, this information is then uh, used by the KRM functions uh, for allocating resources like IP addresses, uh, for example. Uh, and the way uh, this whole thing works is, uh, I mean, if we talk about uh, the flow, uh, the package variant controller enables uh, us to, uh, you know, do this config injection uh, within the package. So the uh, package variant controller basically parses all the resources which are there in package revision. And uh, it will find for the resources with injection is equal to, uh, injection is required uh, annotation. And once it finds that annotate, sorry, once it finds that annotation, uh, it will basically look into the uh, package uh, variant uh, CR spec, and it will uh, look for the injectors within that spec. And that injector basically uh, will contain the information about uh, the exact uh, uh, exact Kubernetes resource which needs to be injected. So, for instance, uh, in 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 this case. 
we have the uh, workload cluster and edge one is the exact resource which uh, uh, we need uh, to, to inject. So uh, then basically we will fetch the workload object and uh, inject into the package revision. And then finally it will be uh, uploaded to the desired package. So we have uh, we have these two repositories. One is the source package repository and then the desired package repository. Source package repository will contain the blueprints, which will be like empty, uh, uh, empty uh, KRM files. And then the desired package will uh, contain the hydrated ones. And after that, uh, the conditions will be updated in the uh, KPT file uh, with the status as, as true. So as we can see, uh, in this in this example uh now uh, we will uh, discuss about the uh, specialization pipeline and uh, condition choreography um, so uh, basically the base kpd file uh, contains the uh, contains the pipeline functions so uh, we can see that here we have a base kpd file uh, where th there are various functions uh, which are there in the pipeline and whenever a uh, package uh, revision, uh, whenever we save a package revision, it triggers the pipeline. And the function uh, inventory basically creates owns and watch for, for that. Uh, and basically it adds the dependencies in the KPT file. And it, up, and, and it uploads the KPT file with those dependencies. And then we have a generic specializer, which looks into those uh, dependencies and uh, accordingly, it calls the KPT functions. Uh, for, for example, uh, if we look at the K, uh, here, the snippet of the KPT file, one of the type is IP claim and the status is not ready. So generic specializer will basically call the uh, IP claim function, which will uh, allocate an IP address by uh, referring to uh, the workload cluster context. And once, uh, once the uh, you know the corresponding function uh, uh, performs a task, it basically marks the status as done, and the generic specializer controller uh, looks for uh, all the status of all the conditions. And when all the conditions are met and the status is done for all the conditions, it will basically uh, uh, it basically approve the package. So there is a flow which we we will look at uh, later in the slides. So. Uh, at the end, basically, uh, the uh, the end result of this would be uh, a deployment of uh, a UPF deployment created in the CR in Edge One cluster, and that cluster, uh, the config sync is watching that repository, and it basically synchronizes it to the Edge cluster. Again, when we'll have a look at the demo, uh, it will be more clear. Uh, so now I'll. Uh, talk about uh, our particular use case. Uh, I mean, for which we we are trying to or uh, we intend to use Nephew for. So our use case it's it start from the bare metal provisioning uh, itself. So we have a bare metal uh, where uh, so the first thing is to uh, discover that bare metal, discover the capabilities of the bare metal, uh, and then uh, you know. Uh, install operating system on top of that, and if required, uh, yeah, Kubernetes uh, on top of that, and then of course uh, uh, deploying the workloads. And we have different uh, use cases. Uh, some requires VMs to be created on the bare metal servers. Uh, some requires containers, and some requires VMs uh, as pods using Kubeword. Uh, so as I told, so our our use case. So this is basically a high level. Uh, uh, diagram of uh, how we intend to use Nephew uh, for our use case uh, in the bare metal provisioning part. So uh, we basically use an open source uh, project called Metal Cube for this. Um, so Metal Cube has Ironic uh, uh, underneath. Uh, so so basically, uh, it it can talk to a server using protocols like uh, Redfish, IPMI, etc. Uh, so it uh, it, it can take control of the server and perform operations like inspecting the server uh, to know its hardware resources, the CPU, RAM, storage, etc. And it, it can uh, clean and reboot the server to install operating system. And it can also be used to uh, provision Kubernetes. So basically, it, it, it has a cluster API plugin. Uh, 
so yeah so by which we can use uh, to install kubernetes on on top of the server so i'll i'll just uh, break it down this uh, diagram uh, to understand uh, it in uh, more detail so here uh, we have two repositories one is the management repository uh, which will contain the blueprint packages for infra so these are the base packages uh, for infra and then we have a management staging repo uh, which contains the final curated packages which are synced by the uh, config sync so the config sync is uh, running in the um, management cluster itself and we have a repository uh, which, which it points to so the user will uh, provide uh, a high level intent like details of the bmc uh, and the kind of uh, uh, operating system which needs to be installed and maybe the details of uh, kubernetes uh, installation or distribution which needs to be uh, used and then that intent is processed uh, by nifio specialization controllers and packages from the blueprint repo and they are cloned and hydrated and they are pushed into the management repo once uh, they are pushed into the management repo uh, basically the config sync kicks in and it uh, starts deploying the resources uh so th this was about the bare metal provisioning uh now uh, we'll, we'll talk about the workload orchestration so uh in workload orchestration basically we uh, we have a golden repo uh, this golden template repo basically contains the configuration of uh, vendor specific network functions and also we have a per tenant repo so we have a multi tenancy system multi tenant system so we whenever we onboard a tenant we create a repository a git repository for for that tenant so this uh, this again this uh, per tenant repo will contain the uh, hydrated or curated uh, packages uh, which the config sync uh, you know is pointing to so again uh, the user provides a very high level intent about the topology uh, which will contain the resources which required uh, for the topology and the configuration which needs to be overridden and uh, once the intent is given uh, porch and specialization controllers will create the km krm packages which is an instance of our topology uh, so basically we, we have an operator written uh, and there is a cr topology cr which uh, reads the uh, uh, which which reads this uh, topology instance and it performs a bunch of tasks um, for example it stores the details in, in a graph database and then it triggers uh, a workflow and we are we are using kamunda as as our workflow engine so so there are different microservices uh, which are listening for their task uh, so once a microservice gets a task it will start working on that and uh, once it's done it will update the status in in the graph database so uh, this is uh, the way we uh, you know this is this is basically the flow and we use uh, uh, different uh, open source projects um, uh, like ansible terraform uh, etc uh so uh, now we will just uh, go through the demo um, which is uh, this demo is nothing but the demo uh, which is available or was created by the community this is uh, uh, the demo of about the r1 release and uh, what all features the r1 has um so this demo basically covers all the three swim lanes which we just looked at the workload uh, infrastructure workload and workload configuration so uh, the demo basically is uh, i mean uh, it's we will create three edge clusters in the demo uh, three clusters in the demo one will be a regional cluster and there are two edge clusters uh, this will cover the infrastructure swim lane and then we will deploy free 5gc this will cover the workload swim lane uh, and then finally we'll uh, update the capacity of upf in one of the clusters and this will basically demonstrate the workload configuration swim lane okay uh, so i i have a recording of the demo uh, so let me share that
Yeah, so here to start with, we can see that uh, we have two blueprint repositories. Uh, one is for the uh, uh, workload uh, and the other one is for uh, the free 5G packages, uh, which is basically for uh, uh, the one is for infrastructure and the other is for workload. Uh, and we have one management repository and one uh, management staging repository. So out of these repositories, uh, the management one is the deployment repository, uh, which basically means that it has config sync running and there is a Git repository, uh, which this config sync is pointing to. Uh, so the first uh, uh, basically uh, part is, uh, or, or in this demo is to uh, create a cluster, which is a regional cluster. So to do that, uh, we will do some, um, uh, so, so there are different ways we can perform uh, the same task. Uh, so we will cover all those ways one by one. So first way is basically, uh, you know, to uh, clone the repository and then do a bunch of manual steps. Uh, so here we are cloning a repository, basically uh, one of the blueprint packages. And uh, after uh, cloning it, we can actually uh, uh, once we once we clone it, we can uh, pull those uh, packages. So pulling those packages will uh, you know uh, we'll have that packages in in our local or in, in the system, wherein we can update uh, anything uh, any configuration which we want to. Uh, for instance, in this example, uh, what we are doing is uh, we are using a, a KPT function to update the labels. So we are marking the uh, site as the regional site. So it, it just, uh, you know, updates uh, labels in the uh, KRM files. So once we make those changes, uh, then we need to uh, push the package. Uh, pushing the package will basically push it to the uh, remote uh, Git repo. And uh, once the package is pushed, uh, it basically will remain in the draft state in the Git repo. So config sync will not, uh, you know, uh, kick in until uh, it goes through the life cycle, which is uh, propose and approve. So uh, now we need to uh, propose it, propose the package first, uh, and then we need to approve. So once it's approved, it basically goes uh, in the main branch uh, in Git, and the config sync basically, uh, you know, kicks in and it performs. Uh, it will deploy those packages. Yeah, so now it has been approved. Uh, now we can uh, have a look at the UI. So this is uh, the Napier UI. So we can see that there is one management repository. Uh, um, and in the deployments, we can see that there is one deployment which is published. And if we go inside the repository, uh, we should be able to see the, uh, you know, uh, the cluster or regional cl details about the cluster, which we just created. Yeah, so I'll just. Yeah, so all, all those packages are going, going, going through, uh, uh, you know, the phase phases, which I just talked about. Once uh, every, all the packages are, published, we can see that uh, there is a repository created uh, for uh, uh, the the cluster, uh, sorry, uh, for, uh, yeah, for the cluster which we just created, which is the regional cluster. So, uh, I mean, basically, uh, now we have a, a cluster and a Git repository, which was as a part of the boot, bootstrap uh, phase. Yeah, so we can see the cluster here and also we can see the Git repository uh, which is created for that cluster. And 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 we also have the config sync running uh, in the cluster. Now that we created a regional uh, cluster, we now want to create two edge clusters. Uh, for this, we will take a different approach. Uh, so basically there will be uh, this, uh, uh, I mean, there are certain steps which are automated now. So we will be using a package variant set, which is uh, which which is a uh, which is a resource from uh, Porch. So a package variant set basically has an upstream repo and uh, then the target repositories. So in this case, the upstream repo will remain the same because we are uh, you know deploying the uh, uh, we we basically are creating the clusters itself. Uh, 
And the downstream and the target repo now uh, we will use the KRM functions to label it as the edge sites. Uh, and there are a bunch of uh, things which uh, a package variant set will do for us. So for instance, uh, we did some manual steps in the previous step, uh, which is to uh, clone the repository, then uh, update it, update the content of it, then push it, and then the life cycle of the package. All those things, we don't have to do it now. We just need to create a package variant set and apply it. And the controller will take care of performing all those steps for us. So uh, here we can see that we now we have uh, two more clusters created, edge one and edge two. And in total, we have three clusters and uh, three repositories. And all those three clusters are workload clusters. So there is config sync, which is running. Yeah, so this basically covers uh, the uh, the first part, uh, now uh, the infrastructure part. Now we will uh, come to the workload part. So yeah, so th this basically just in the UI we can just see that we have a uh, total four repositories now, uh, two edge repositories and one regional. And management was uh, the repository which was already there. So now uh, we will, uh, yeah, so th there are some uh, uh, manual steps which needs to be done uh, for, uh, which is basically, you know, uh, creating the uh, inter cluster networking uh, and, and all. So these, these, these are the steps which will be automated in future release of Nephew. But for now, uh, these are the manual steps which we have to do. So there, there are some scripts written for that. So here we are just running those scripts. So I'll just forward it a bit. So now we will uh, basically uh, deploy the free 5G uh, free 5G control plane uh, uh, component. So for that we will use the UI, uh, Nephew UI. Uh, we will add a deployment, uh, and once we click on add deployment, we can select uh, the that we want to do it via the Blueprint package, and then we can select the package which are inside that Blueprint repo. So here we are selecting the free 5GC. And then we can select the exact uh, package revision uh, which we want to use. So the, here we are uh, obviously deploying the control pin uh, components. And yeah, so we'll just move ahead, click next. And once we are at the confirmation screen, we'll create the deployment. So at this stage, it will uh, uh, you know uh, clone the repo repository and uh, uh, it will also, uh, yeah, it will clone the repository and then push the changes. But we have to, uh, you know, go through the life cycle, the same life cycle which we discussed, uh, which is propose and then approve. So until we approve, the config sync will not kick in uh, and it will be in the draft state in the Git repo. Yeah, so now it's been approved and we can see that there is a namespace created uh, with the name of free 5G CP. Now uh, we will uh, similarly, we will deploy AMF, SMF and UPF. So uh, the, the, uh, these these components will be deployed using the package, uh, uh, package variant set, uh, the same way we deployed edge clusters. So it's it just applying those resources. So, Yeah, so uh, again, they, they, they will go, uh, to, uh, I mean, uh, via their life cycle uh, of uh, what we discussed in, in, in the previous, uh, you know, sections. Uh, this is just, this is just uh, the, I mean, uh, just the configuration. Uh, we need to register the uh, UE. Uh, so I, I'll just skip that part.
Yeah, and then finally we will uh, uh, deploy the UE RAN simulator in one of the edge clusters. Um, and this time we will use package variant. Uh, so package variant set basically creates packet variant. Uh, uh, so package, uh, yeah, so we uh, in package variant set, we have uh, multiple downstream. Uh, so based on those, it will create package variant. So in this case, we only have one downstream that is edge one. So we'll just create package variant for that. And uh, it will it will basically deploy the UE RAM simulator. So once the UE RAM simulator is deployed, we can uh, uh, we can do a quick ping test. Okay, so these are the components. Uh, I mean uh, the pods of UE RAM simulator which are up now, uh, and here we are doing a ping test. Yeah. So now the uh, workload uh, part is also covered. Uh, now we will uh, move the to the workload configuration. So uh, for that, uh, we have uh, UPF deployed in edge one. So, and we can see that the capacity of uh, UPF is uh, the uplink and downlink is five. Uh, and we want to uh, change it to 10. So we'll see how uh, we can do that. So again, uh, we will uh, we will basically copy uh, the repository, uh, the uh, existing UPF, uh, uh, you know, deployment. Uh, so here we are uh, doing that. We are getting the package variant, and then we are copying it to uh, a new package variant. So it 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 will basically create a package uh, package revision, and then we can again. Uh, you know, uh, update uh, the content of it. Either we can update it manually, so or we can also use uh, the KPT functions. So in this example, uh, we have used both just to uh, you know, uh, just to show that these are the various ways uh, we can do that. So we will pull the package first so that we have the resources uh, uh, locally, and then we can see that uh, in, in the base package uh, it is the max upload uh, uplink and the downlink throughput is five. Uh, we can update it via KPT functions or manually. So here we are using a KPT function to update one of them. And then we are manually updating the other one. So once it's updated, we can save it. And then uh, we can basically push these changes. Uh, we can have a look at the diff. So we can see that it's, it's yeah, we can just uh, see the diff and then we can push this. And then the, of course the same flow, uh, you know, to, to propose and approve it. And once uh, the package is approved, uh, the config sync will, you know, uh, start, uh, uh, synchronizing and we will see that now the configuration is changed and the capacity uh, is now 10. So again, uh, via UI, we are looking at the configuration uh, of the UPF in edge one cluster. Yeah, so here we can see the capacity is now 10. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think, uh, this was this is the demo. Uh, so if there are any questions or any suggestions. Okay. I have a question here. Yeah, for the configuration, uh, for configuration part to update, uh, let's say for the uh, 35GC UPF, you want to change the uh, uh, the bandwidth. So you said there is two, two methods. One is manually, one with KPT file. So to do that, you, you have to create a new revision of that package, uh, package variant revision. Yes. Yes. 
you can we, um, okay. we have to we have to create a new revision and that that will be pushed and it will be basically a uh, version control so okay. it will have a different version in, okay. in the git repo it's not in the current uh, package variant no you, you can see a, a a a package revision for each of the versions for each of the versions yes but uh, there will be only one version with the latest tag okay yes okay. Okay, um, so I, I think we can move on to the next session now. Uh, yes.